Hi guys, my name is John Downing and I'm the founder of Live for Life. Um, first off, let me say I'm sorry that I can't be with you, um, but I'm really excited about what all of you um, are going to be a part of and what Nicola has planned for you as the outreach team this year in Zimbabwe. Um, and as a part of that, Nicola has asked me to do a little intro for you, talking about the history and the background and how Live for Life uh, got started. And so I guess all of that goes back to 2015. Um, that year, I went on a sports outreach trip. Uh, we focused on mainly soccer, uh, basketball, volleyball, and a bunch of other little sports. And we went to various communities around Harare as well up as up into the mountain range um, in the Nyanga area of Zimbabwe. And for me, this was the first time I had ever left the country. Um, and so it was a huge undertaking for me. Uh, it was something you know I raised funds for, like many of you probably did to go on this trip. Um, and it was something that, uh, to be honest, I had originally signed up to go on a different trip. And so no one else signed up to go on that one. And so I um, got the option to go to Zimbabwe as my only option. And I took it and didn't know really anything about the country uh, when I first went. And the trip itself was very eye-opening. It was, I obviously learned a lot. Um, but at the end of that trip, um, I didn't really know what was going to bring me back to Zimbabwe. All of the other team members I was with, um, they were talking about how they had plans to come back and how they had all these ideas for their own interests, whether it be soccer or uh, basketball. Um, but myself, I had no like immediate desire or pull that was like thrusting me to come back to Zimbabwe and so it was really interesting on the last day of that trip I uh, got the opportunity to go visit a community and that was the community of Glenora and we were walking around this community center uh, they were talking about all of their great ideas how they wanted to start some basketball programs and soccer and how the fields behind it as you'll see um, there's always kids out there playing soccer and so we're walking around this building, and here I am, a powerlifter. I haven't done another sport since high school. Um, you know, well, started powerlifting high school as well, but I was mainly a football player. Um, and, you know, I have this huge passion for powerlifting, and I didn't know what was going to bring me back to Zimbabwe, but I'm walking around this building, and I see nothing at first, but I hear the incredible sound that we all know um, and that's the sound of metal plates hitting the floor. Um, barbells and plates they have their own distinct uh, noise that they create. Um, anybody can recognize that noise as they're walking up to it or close by it and for me uh, that that was the truly the moment that began and started all of the thoughts and ideas that become Lift for Life. Um, I went around the corner of that building. Um, I'll never forget it. This really awesome moment in my life. And I see uh, a bunch of people lifting. Um, see and do lifting. Um, you know, obviously, I became good friends with him over the years. Um, and I just start to have all of these ideas. and. Uh, this country that had no stake in my life, uh, that I did not see myself coming back to, in the blink of the eye, I found a special place in my heart. And um, Live for Life, as I said, was born out of that because I got all of these ideas of how you know, our sport of powerlifting in itself is very competitive, it's a great sport, but at its root, it is a community-based sport. And strength sports in general just breed community around it and you know I've coached hundreds of powerlifters at this moment in my life and it does amazing things for people it's you know provides confidence in areas that they did not know they had I've seen people's lives change through powerlifting and uh, it was in that moment that I wanted that opportunity and that um, greatness that is powerlifting to take hold in Zimbabwe and so 
you know, literally an hour after that, we're in the airport, we're flying back to the United States, um, and everyone else on that trip never returned to Zimbabwe. Um, all the people that were so enthusiastic um, in their words were not so enthusiastic in their, their actions, per se. And so I commend all of you for coming out and coming on this trip, uh, not just to be a part of what will be going on with Kim, but for taking yourself out of your probable comfort zone to go visit a place um, that you've never been and to experience things that you've never been a part of. And, you know, I'm on my way home on that trip and, and I start contacting all of these people. I'm like, does Zimbabwe have powerlifting or is this just something I'm making up in my mind? Um, you know, I contacted the IPF, I contacted and searched the internet all over the place uh, trying to figure out does this idea in my mind already exist? Um, and I kept finding all of these blanks. And so, you know, my life that entire fall, August, September, uh, October, all revolved around creating this organization. Um, and, you know, I'm a high school teacher. I have no background in nonprofit work. I have no uh, knowledge of it. And so I'm catching up my memory, I'm expanding what I know, and I am just starting the roots of Live for Life, and Live for Life becomes an entity then in October of 2015. Uh, I remember going to Raw Nationals that year in uh, Atlanta, and I already had, um, you know, business cards to hand out, because I know so many people, I know, like, Kim's obviously there, I've known her for years, and, uh, and so I start telling all of these people about this great idea and, you know, it just started to develop and grow and take on its own form from there. And you know what, from the basis of where it began, um, we've changed a lot and we've grown and, you know, we've developed in areas I never imagined, you know, we build all of our own plates there. We build all of our own racks and equipment and, you know, powerlifting not only breeds community in Zimbabwe and these communities that we're a part of, but powerlifting, you know, creates jobs and it does amazing things that I, when I had that original idea of how I wanted to impact this community, had no idea it could be done or that that was an option or it could develop and change in that way. And so it's been amazing to see and be a part of how powerlifting, how, you know, working out the thing that we love doing has truly impacted an area and changed it. Um, you know, from there, we've had a lot of people help out over the years. We had Challenge Barbell based in India. They sent over plates. That was the very first set of plates we had there, which we have then looked at and used to help us build what we build there today. Um, obviously, Kim is on this trip. I think I reached out to Kim probably even in 2015. I was like, you know, someday you need to go to Zimbabwe with me. And I kept plugging it and plugging it and plugging it and, you know, Last year I was like, you know, I think this is the time. And so Kim agreed and, you know, Kim's an awesome person. She's there with you now. And, you know, I'm just so excited that all of you are there. Um, I personally wish I could be there too. Um, it's been a busy year for me from hosting Collegiate Nationals to uh, I'm getting married in three weeks. So it's pretty awesome and I'm excited for that. And I'm excited for my life to be growing and changing. And uh, I'm excited for Lift for Life. And I'm excited that all of you are a part of it and you're there. Um, Hope you have a good time. Um, I hope you you learn a lot. I hope uh, you fall in love with these communities that I have, and I hope that you all get something very special out of this trip. Um, and I'm just so thankful for all of you taking your time out of your lives uh, to be a part of what has grown and become Live for Life. Thank you.